Hey, here we are. June 20th, 2020. We're open. Welcome. Welcome to the Studio Gallery of M. Francis McCarthy. Oh, that's a painting by my friend Joan, the Rose. Okay, so I'm gonna get settled in. Oh, you wanna see this? Go in Iraq. Things are always shifting and changing a little bit. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Anyway, we're gonna get to settle in the camera and get some painting done. That's what we're going after. Study of Jules Debris. Back. How you doing? Yeah, I got a beanie on today because it's cold. I'm cold. Yeah, so give me a little more warmth than the old beret might. Um, yeah, so hey, Jules Dupree. Uh, okay, so what's going on? First of all, it's going to be a long video because I'm going to show you the paint mixing. I'm going to talk about, okay, I got a folder. I got a folder full of toneless stuff, right? There you go. Look at all that. Bunch of stuff. Bunch of stuff I think might be cool to do a study of. Just did a nice big painting. I've been wanting to do an 8x10. Jules painting is actually more like, what it should have been like a 7x10 to scale. But I've, um, I've added a bit to the top in an intelligent way. So I've been wanting to do 8x10s. I have a bunch of 8x10 frames and I kind of want to revisit the size. I did nothing but 8x10s for a long time and I just got so sick of that size and, 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 and mad at it to be honest because it's almost a square but it's not a square. It's a great size. Don't get me wrong. So I'm going to take you through the whole deal. First thing we're going to do is just start mixing some colors. It's not going to be super involved but I like to start, so uh, why am I sharing all that? So you know, pick something, get it to scale with your board. I highly recommend that. That is going to be very helpful if you're doing a study. If you're trying to make uh, adaptations to a different size board than the artist. Um, I use Photoshop, but there's a lot, of, there's actually a really good uh, program called, um, oh Jesus, it starts with an A, I can't read it, I can't remember it. Uh, It'll come to me. I uh, put my nephew onto that because you can get that for 50 bucks. I better just help you out. Hold on. I'm going to use uh, DuckDuckGo. The best one. Affinity Photo. Yeah, no, I ain't gonna do that. Good boy. Affinity, get that. You can do almost anything you, you need to do in Photoshop to set up your paintings. And um, it's, it's like 45, 50 bucks, but lifetime license. Whereas Photoshop just wants to get a lot of money from you all the time. So let's jump you say, I'm getting bored already, Mike. I know, man, that's cool. I'm trying to show you here that the whole process I go after to do a study, okay? So now I'm going to mix some colors. Uh, I, I see three colors there. Um, a bluish color, uh, a warm gray, and then this uh, this whitish tone. Uh, one thing I don't like about old uh, Jules' thing is I really hate that diagonal there, but it doesn't mean I have to paint it that way because I'm not doing this for the museum. I'm doing it because I want to look, okay? Oh, yeah, I know there's a glare off the palette. All right, so I like to go if there's like a blue in the sky, a bluish tone. There's a bit of blue in there. I, I, I've got this ancient bit. This cobalt, cobalt's a very uh, slow drawer on the palette, 
It's probably enough to do this little painting. I'm going to mix that with some gray. Now these are two whites. I'll take you through this real quick. Lead white, titanium white, cad yellow, yellow ochre. Most of these are gambling, some aren't. Raw umber, Mike's green. You want to know what Mike's green is? Watch one of my old videos. Indian yellow, uh, cad orange, cad red, burnt sienna. Burn number. I wanted to tell you I'm so happy. Look, a whole new tube of burn number. I love you, burn number. I'm gonna put you on my palette all the time. Although I can get burn number by mixing raw umber and burnt sienna, burn number is gonna figure real heavily into this. So, whoa, we got drips, we got pores. What the heck? That's a gooey black spinel from old camp. Bless you though, Gamut, for making a wonderful color like black spinel. I will, I will complain. Alright, moving on. Burn number. Alizarin Crimson. Some phthalo green. That's probably got a skin on it. That'll be alright. We won't be using a heck of a... I could see a few spots. I might bring it up. That's permanent green light from Gamblin. That's the only permanent green light I think that works, by the way. Dioxine Purple. A lot of these won't be using, but just a little update for you. Um... The palette does shift, does change. Uh, yeah, ivory black. Uh, this is fatal blue, black spinel. You gooey guy, you. We'll be doing our drawing with black spinel. So, Mike's gray, which is a mixture of ivory black and um, titanium white. That's going to be too much for that sky. That probably won't be enough, but you know, if you want to mix the wrong color, uh, definitely add too much white. Okay, I can grade up too much, but I think I'll grab a little of Thalo. Thalo is quite strong. A bit of a skin on the Thalo. Look how strong. That's nice. And. We gotta add some complexity this color. I'm gonna add in a little bit of yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is a great color just for um, skies, if nothing else, but you can use it for all kinds of. If I had a real limited landscape palette, I definitely want yellow ochre as a part of it because it's an earthy color. So that'd be our blue. Blue taken care of. Like I said, I don't care. It's been a long video. I like to speed this up. There's short videos on the channel. I'm assuming you're coming here because you want to learn how to do this stuff. So uh, today, at least, I'm going to show the whole mixing process. I've had some requests by lovely commenters on the channel, and I appreciate the comments. And so I'm going to reciprocate with some color mixing and the whole deal, the whole deal. So you can apply the stuff I'm, I'm showing you towards any master painting you want to make a study after, really. Yeah. I sold plenty of these studies as well. It was a tribute to study after Jules Dupree. No one even knows who he is anymore, especially out here. In merry old New Zealand. If it ain't Constable, they don't know. Or one of their Kiwi guys. All right, here's a good tip for you too. Buy better quality towels and tear them in half. You'd be surprised how much you waste. So you're wasting, you know, half a towel. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Next color. Now we could get this color with gray, and we're probably going to use some gray. But one of my thoughts is to get a warm, complex gray, because. Because so we're gonna use um, as a base cad orange and a tiny amount of a tiny amount of cobalt. I'm gonna need to make that more cobalt. It's gonna give us kind of this complex color, almost a brown. But you'll see it will reveal its identity when we start bringing in the white. We're getting a warm, muddy gray. Like I say, it's got some complexity to it. It's not just a gray made with from this cool gray here you make from titanium white ivory black. Very useful. Ivory black. 
Catch more blue. Uh, so that's um, that's um, complementary colors. So you got your orange and your blue. See, they cancel each other out. They make a muddy gray. I had more orange than blue. I like that. I'm going to add some of this romber. I like that. And a little bit of um, like that. You can mix that with some grays and stuff later. So did I know I wasn't gonna make my gray with? I could have got a, a, a gray by doing Mike's gray and adding, you know, uh, the, um, adding the, uh, raw umber and a little yellow ochre and it would have been kind of similar, but having a complementary base gave me a level of complexity that's going to make it a better painting. You dig? Again, because school is in session, all right. School is in session. We're importing gems. Hopefully, you tuned in for this one. You can bail at three minutes, but that's okay. We got limited time as human beings. Limited time on this uh, mortal coil. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's do our white. I think I'm going to use this. I've got some which I'm going out there. Gonna add some of that. So we need more of that. White's not white by the way, white's really kind of some off-white gray color. Now I look in at that, I see how I can totally get that with like a glaze later on, but We'll make something pretty close. What's this? Dry paint? Yeah. Of all the colors I mix, I have to say the um, the whites and the lights in the sky always take the longest. Is that dry paint? I have dry paint. It's a dry paint. It's getting heavy. It's getting heavy. Pretty, pretty close. Pretty, pretty close to what I want. You might be looking at the reference, going, "Well, I go a lot lighter." Well, go ahead. <laughs> Seriously, when I mix these, I go for the, like the middle of each tone, and I am basically just kind of starting. What I like about doing this is I like to. Uh, I'll we'll probably need a little more, but that's okay. We can always mix as we're painting. Um, in fact, you don't even need to pre-mix. I, what I was just going to say, though, is what I like about the pre-mixing. Is it kind of gets your head into the painting. You're not, you don't have the stress of actually doing anything yet. You're starting to work in the colors. And then, so I'm really into doing things that will support me as a, a painter. Make it easy. That's why I do an underpainting, uh, you know, a drawing. So I'll pre mix colors. I could have done this lunch today, but I just finished prepping this board. I was going to paint yesterday and I, I wanted to do this size. I didn't have any boards prepped, so I spent yesterday afternoon doing board prep. Now, oh, so instinctively, I'm cleaning my palette because I don't want any of the whites, the milkiness from that. I don't want that in my darkest colors at all. So I'll even get a little bit of mineral. I keep a little mineral spirits in that bottle. Uh, this is one of the main jobs I use my mineral spirits for is cleaning my palette. I don't use it in my painting process hardly at all. Nicely you dropped in some turpentine today, which initially you might try playing with it. I really like the smell and the smell says oil painting. Um, but it sat here in the studio for a while and I started getting a headache. Um, because I can't work with terps. They give me a headache. Even though I like the smell. Figure that out, eh? 
So I just gave that away to another artist. Burn number. I'm so happy. I love my tube of burn number. Thank you, universe, for the lovely tube of burn number. Okay, next color. I'm gonna just plop down some black here. Gonna be some spinel. That's my darkest color. You dig? Now we may get interrupted. If we do, I'll pause. If I gotta go to the bathroom or something, I'll pause. If I gotta sneeze, you're just gonna have to hear that. Spinel, darkest color. Next. Really that. I'm gonna add a touch of ivory black just to give it some complexity. I'm not into the straight out of the tube stuff. The exception might be black. And let's do a little bit of this uh Just want a little complex scene. Now. It's going to be working off the black. That's second to darkest color. It's a, okay, what's the difference? It probably looks the same to you in the camera. There's a subtle difference, but that subtle bit of complexity is what, all, to make a good painting, there's like hundreds maybe thousands of things that have to go right. And one of those things that needs to go right is a certain attitude in your color mixing. And that's why I'm sharing that with you today. So where I could have just gone with the tube color, which is, I see it. Am I gonna do these reds? I do see a lot of red in this. So let's go do a little bit. That'll be your crimson. Hey, hey. Now, really, to wake crimson up, we need to add, it's very transparent. We're going to add a little bit of this. And that's going to look fakey. Although I see these reds in his painting are really sort of fakey. I will remember to that. You see, it looks red, but now it's more natural. So, this is what I'm trying to say. It's like you need to add some complexity to colors if you want natural looking colors. You, you think you can just. I knew a lady, she wanted to be an artist. She didn't know how to mix colors. She had a dream that she was a rich artist. I knew this lady well. Um, she's, she's like, well, I don't want to learn how to mix colors. I'm just going to buy every color I need from the paint company. I'm like, wow, great idea. We'll call her D, D, D. Next. I need a lot of that red. Didn't make a lot. Greeny tones. Start with the base of Mike's green. Ooh, I guess I put that on top of one that had a bit of a skin. That's not good. I made more Mike's green, but that's got a skin. We don't want the skin. Apologize if you've been hearing the same music over and over. Um, there's about 200 songs or something there, but maybe it's 100. I, I need to add more, um, but uh, I don't have to get I don't get copyright strikes for this stuff, so and I'm not going to sit there being the big guy breathing. Yeah. Anyway, um, what am I going to do to add some complexity to that? Go oh, good old burn umber. Oh, it's so exciting! Look at that. Nice. And a, hmm, looking at it, um, some of this, be careful, there's some dryness there too. So I will usually, if I've identified a skin, one of my tips is just go like that, you know, because a lot of times the dry bits might be underneath. And then just scrape it up, push it, roll it, try and get it. Looks like there's a lot of dry bits. Oh, it's no good. It's no good. We tried though. I don't like to throw paint away. Mm. 
Well, I see the uh, priorities. Bird Santa, great color. Could do a heck of a lot with just Bird Sienna, yellow ochre, raw umber, black and white. That could be a great limited palette. Oh, but we don't need black. Yeah, take your take your ideas about black. Take them over to the Impressionist channel. Look at that. Nice earthy green. If you get one thing from my channel, it's that green. Those greens. getting close because the, the colors in the pond or uh, river or whatever um, yeah, you paint that cow I can see it now I don't even know if I'm gonna paint that weird hut back there it's it's look at this uh, it's not that big. Uh, but so kind of blurring my eyes here yeah, who knows one of these days I may end up putting raw sienna on my palette because I'm always mixing it too but um, Gonna be kind of a raw sienna tone, yellow ochre. I think you get a really quick raw sienna. Oh no, I'm wrong. I'm so wrong. Uh, I was gonna say with yellow ochre and um, burn number, but nah, you have to do the orange. There we go. Looks nice. Raw Sienna, I mean, it can be different colors from different um, uh, paint manufacturers, but usually I think of it as kind of an orangey. It's a Sienna, lighter than the burnt, uh, burnt Sienna. Yeah, we're done. Color mixed. Got our head wrapped around this, so. Pause here. I'll be right back. We're gonna get into the drawing. Okay, we're back. We're back. And um, I had to make a cup of tea. Really, the cup I have is like kind of cold herbal tea. Herbal tea. Oh uh, yeah. So let's get some oil. I like this one. Archival Oils brand. Odorless Lean. The oil painting medium of. Champion oil painters. And you know who you are. Yeah, we're going to need some, actually need a little extra because we're going to oil this board out. I wanted to show you, I'm showing you everything today. You're getting it all. Hopefully you got patience, you got time. But you can pause, keep it open in the tab there. Yeah, and maybe after the, the kids have gone to sleep. There, get yourself some M. Francis action. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's got stuff on it. So, we're oiling out the board. Oh, that should be enough. Yeah, well, you say, well, I didn't even know it was that color. Yeah, because I sanded it, and in the process of sanding it, you it gets all milky. So that's the color, the real color. Now, I'm being a bit frugal with that oil because I end up wiping a lot of it off, so we don't want to waste. Waste not, why not? Now, this is uh, two coats. Uh, the transparent acrylic gesso with a tint of a um, little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of uh, raw umber, a little bit of burnt sienna. 
Those are my favorite colors for tinting. You can see it's kind of you know, a threshold between all of them. A very smooth surface we got going today. Uh, the board we're working on is laminated MDF. I go to oh, squeaking, really? This is Fijian Cowry on NDF. I've had this board since for six years. You can see some interesting little staining uh, on the back actually here where like it got exposed to some light. Very interesting. Okay. It's like Mike, are you ever gonna paint? Oh my god. Well you can see that way that was important. That wasn't even resembling the color it was. Okay, so okay. <laughs> Uh, I think we're going to do some drawing. This is a Zero. It's a DOS Bristol Filbert. It's a cheap brush. Can you get these in the US? I don't know, but they work good. I use them a lot. I think it will bring in a touch of uh, some burn number. I'm in the burn number frame of mind. Just warm it up. That black spell kind of cool. To, to, to be honest, I think I'll even mix some of that. But I like it. I was thinking uh, that I was gonna think. I think you know, maybe I want to do this whole drawing with burn number because I'm so happy to have my new tube of burn number, but. That would end up creating more work because I'm gonna have to go in and do darker bits and this and that and whatever's. Hopefully, I'm not getting too technical for you. <laughs> All right, let's jump in. Oil on that brush. What's it gonna break out the T square? I know we love some some T square. Let's me some T-square. I like being square. Better than finding doing all this multitude of work and finding out you had done it crooked. You thought from, especially you're not aware maybe, but I'm painting at an angle. For you. I do that for you. If I didn't have to videotape this, I'd paint straight on. But the angle allows you to see what I'm doing. You could zoom in a touch more. And much in the top of that sky, mostly because of the way I used Photoshop to expand it. He had his, and so I'm leaving room for the frame rabbit because his would have been probably a lot larger. Well, I like that. Painting's done. I like that. I do. Let's get these glasses off. And I'll help you. So it is this kind of an L-shaped uh, composition. I need just a lot less color, a lot more oil. I'm gonna wipe off my brush. There's pigment in the brush. I'm nearsighted, so I take my glasses off. Um, things are kind of blurry and diffused. That helps me to um, just see the big shapes. But if you have perfect vision, you can do get a similar result just by I think I'm over a little far, but that's all right.
Dupree wine. And uh, this is, I think it's early Dupree. I'm no expert on Dupree, but it seems, it reminds me very much of like Constable, Claude Lorraine. I mean, uh, Constable's definitely an evolution past Lorraine. It has that Lorraine ish feel. And you know, we don't, not that familiar with Lorraine as moderns, but he was, you know, considered one of the very first masters of landscape type painting. And a lot of his work wasn't even really pure landscape. All right, now I'm going to play this tree up. Get this light tree here. Side of the hill. Yeah, I could have moved over a little bit. Oh, well. The oiling out on this board accomplished two purposes. One is uh, we'll be able to do some erasing, which you're going to see in a sec. Where's my stick? I my little stick. <sighs> I'm tired. <laughs> There's a lot of detail in this painting, a lot of detail I don't care about. It's all going to go a lot darker, so. Scale's important too, like I'm doing an 8x10. I know his painting's a lot bigger. I know because all this little tweaky stuff back here, not a big deal if you're doing a, um, you know, uh, doing, working a larger size. Yeah. I believe, I don't have my glasses on, I believe this is the weird house here. With the weird thatched roof. I'll put it in for now. That's what this stage is about. It's about finding your way, it's about uh, figuring things out, you know, before you're laying in a pile of color. You can get all your whole composition worked out, a rough idea of your values. Big mess. 
us here. Uh, one thing I like about what he did was like, these could be super weird, harsh diagonals, but he's really broken things up with the way the shadows are done. Now, we as moderns run into lots more problems with those weird diagonals because of uh, photography. He was looking at the real scene and he, um, my guess is he did some drawings and maybe uh, this is not done in plein air, I can tell you that. I, I don't claim to know everything about Dupree, but So it's a study. I want to get some things off the pre. Um, I want to get. Um, well, right here. I see. I right, just you know, it's about education. It's about uh, making a nice painting. It's about, uh, well, getting Dupree's name out there, you know. He was a great, great painter, and maybe you're not familiar with him. Just put uh, Dupree and painting into a Google image, and you are off to the races. You're going to see a lot of work. Not, not everything. There's a lot of stuff that's in books, actually. I've noticed that doesn't seem to make it on to, um, I don't have a book on Dupree, that would be great, actually. He's known, but he's not, not as famous as like your Corot or your, even your Russo, I would say. But, 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 but you know, well-known Barbizon guy. Oh, I'm pretty happy with that. Like I said, I know there's a cow there. Don't care. It's weirdly straightened out, and this whole gets very flat. Things do get kind of weird. It's like there's like this, like. Again, I don't know if I got this on, but it's like the shore comes in. There's a little outcrop. So my painting is, uh, and one of the reasons I share, um, I'm sharing this with you, I just want you to see that, you know, I, there are differences. And I mean, I could always grid it out or, or you know, it's small enough, I could even print it out and trace it or something. Or, who cares? I mean, we're really after just doing a nice painting that um, bears some resemblance to Dupree. His tree shapes, that's why I mentioned Claude Lorraine, have that sort of archaic quality to them. Like that. Okay. Let's get the glasses back on. So, I mean, I had some good stuff there, I'm kind of losing, but whatever. Everything here is probably going to go away. Um, I don't want to be locked in right now. I wanna... Super smooth board. 
Okay, so one thing that pops in my head is like, uh, I may be done with that little brush. And I want to come in and define some things. Interesting, okay. Let's see what's up now. Oh, oh, I get it. This tree actually comes all the way down here. Whoa. I think I need a little more of this. Like I said, there's a cow there. I could spend an hour painting a cow. I don't want to paint a cow. Jigger, you could paint a cow. <laughs> you go for it. You paint that cow. Let me know how it goes. I have done the cow. I've done cows. Cows aren't that hard either. I just find them distracting. And, uh, heater. It's warm enough in here. We'll make it. When you're doing the mask, don't get hung up. Hung, move, move across the whole thing. Don't get hung up on particular shapes and things like that. Do your best to get it across, but 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 do it so in a manner where you're moving along like it was your own painting. You know, that's my advice to you because. What will happen is you sit there like I say, I go, oh, that's little, got a little round, a little bit of Buddha bum. Um, and I'm going to spend a lot of time trying to get it across. Everything will get stiff and start to look terrible. So I'm just telling you from experience. I'm trying to save you some time.
So another really good reason to do studies after the Masters is to get you out of photography mindset where you as moderns are so conditioned to see things in a photographic way. And these guys didn't see things in a photographic way. And they didn't exactly see things in a natural way either, I have to say. Like, I could see the influence of the Lorraine etching on this guy. He wasn't interpreting nature. Nature doesn't look exactly like this. Yep. Now, you might see one of my nest studies and go, well, that's a lot more faithful than your Dupree. Well, maybe a lot of the reason for that is because I'm more simpatico with the nest, you know what I mean? Also, God knows, I've done enough of the nest studies. I've done a study after every great painting of the nest. Multiple times, many of them. I'm going to nest today. But I was going through that folder I showed you, you know, just looking for some quick inspiration, not, not trying to get all la dee da, object door. Definitely have issues with the light of this against the sky hole. Doing my best to reconcile it with my my mind. It's little things like that that probably took the luster off of Dupree's. I don't know, you know, there's so many ways. It's still a great painting. Don't get me wrong, Jules. I love you. I can see there's reflections on the photography as well here. But I'm after something that looks exciting, looks interesting. Our mind 
process of uh, uh, you know old painting, old work. off. That's all right. You like uh, you go. Now you keep telling yourself, Mike. Keep telling yourself, it's all right. I will. I will keep telling myself it's all right. Eventually, it will be all right. There's so much going on in his painting, and I'm working much smaller. So, give me a break. <laughs> But again, this is what this stage is all about, right? I can see there's subtle things there. I think I'm just gonna fill it in for now. And Pretty close to done with the drawing stage. Let's see. He's got this red hill. No, it's so weird. See the oil pooling up. It's all good. So when you stop your underpainting, well, when you feel like, geez, I've kind of drawn everything I'm going to draw. I mean, I could do clouds and stuff. Let's may as well just get into that with some paint. I'm also going to be working with four, so I'm tempted to jump up to a six in that sky. Yeah. Mm. Nah. I got a new four. Newish. Newer.
Ya Allah. All right, we're gonna zoom in. I'll zoom out now and again. You've seen where I'm at with the color. Oh, nice. Looks nice. Yeah. So when I'm gonna do a sky like this, uh, I like to do the uh, the blue underneath, the blue tone. I don't like that diagonal, and I don't. Let's get a little black in this. Orange. White. So you notice I stop from using one color every over everything. Don't do it. And when do you say, you might say, well, when do I know when to change? <laughs> when do I know when to change, right? Listen to your inner voice, young and pattern one. <laughs> if, if that's what happened, I mean, that's how I know. All right, so I want some other things in here. Ghosts of blue and stuff there. I think the thing to do is just bring in a bunch of this. Maybe a touch of that. We're getting into the kind of category where that warm gray is being. See, it's still kind of holding on to its blueness. Try paint, we like you. 
Yeah, like a nut. More amber. More yellow ochre. Touch of white. I'm gonna do a little bit of lead white. No, don't. Lead white's interesting because it it almost never dries to and gets chunky. A little tap of gray in there. Yeah. So, like doing a painting after uh, one of these old guys, valuable because it gets you out of photo mode. Um, if you got the right attitude and right approach, you're just kind of making one of your paintings, but you got this, this other dude's work to look at and help guide you. They solved most of the problems. So it's a bit like uh, <laughs> buying a frozen pizza. <laughs> Maybe not that bad. Uh, I don't know. It's like one of these meals you've got to, it may be a, the box comes with all the ingredients and you just got to, you know, put things together. I don't know. Either way, problem to be solved. And you're going to see in a minute too why I went with this with that orange basis because it's going to play off of this color. And there's blue in the orange, so clever. I don't know what Dupree did, I have no idea. I do suspect he painted on something in the tone that I'm in, some sort of brown. I used to paint on, in fact, if you saw the last couple, I used to paint on a lot more reddish. Oh yeah. Yeah, happy. Oh, you know what, before we move on though, I often do this, I forget the, um, Water. Like a tap lighter. Whoa, that's not a tap. Holy cow. Did I lose a plot or what? That. Oh, we got a whole song here. Notice that there are no harsh edges in my sky. Everything's going like that. Do you think you're going to paint a harsh edge and then get rid of it? Later, you're going to have an uphill battle. Kind of like I was talking about color mixing a little while back. I think you're going to use the color straight from the tube and get a nuance and um, vitality in your work, um, you're not. That ain't gonna work. Subtle things, they all add up though. Right, some oil. Yeah, I like that color. I want to go a touch darker. Mm. 
and it's like really creeping up on that. Ah, and I went too far. That's okay. I do like that. Yeah, too dark. I like it though. I'm going to go with some lead white. And the lead white will be... Like how many times do you see me... Oh, come on. How many times do you see me grab the titanium and it just blows everything out? Well, it's chunking up a little. You know, Dupree would have just used... Um, lead white. I'm going to need some lead white in my palette, actually. Take a minute to do that. Rubelev. I probably had that chunk of lead white on my palette for, um, I don't know, a month. I don't know if it was a month. It's been a while. That, I don't know if it was Rubelev either. A little bunch of oil in there. Pardon me. <laughs> bunch of oil in there. Very oily. I don't hold it against you though, Rubelev. Super wet, super cushy. It's going to start running every time I pick up this palette to show you anything. See that? Let's bring in some of this. All right, you go ahead and run. I'll eat you in a hurry. It's close to where I went. Taking on that smoky quality like you'll get. Eh, probably. You can see it's different from here. Hi. Surprised her. Doesn't speak anyone look at her. Nice. Not far off from the colors that uh, he had. There was a time when I was going to keep the home studio, you know, it's back to being my wife's sewing room, which is fine. I, I barely use it. I've got a space to paint in my home office if I want to do anything. 
Um, but uh, I was thinking I had a separate computer here for a little while, maybe saw it. And uh, the thing is with my Adobe license, it only allows me to have, let's use some more over in that. It allows you to have Adobe uh, Photoshop on two computers. So that was three computers. So I was thinking of using this program which is brought up to show you. Because there's lots of times like oh, I'll need to make some changes. And I do recommend you do that. Modify and look at your reference. Get it proportionally right. Do do everything you can to get yourself you lined up. Because there's so many ways to fail, so many obstacles to making a good painting. You're sexy. You're stinker, sexy. So many obstacles to making a good painting that you really got to support yourself every way you can, every way you can. I said it already. All right, so we got a bunch of this. And this color we didn't even use the way it is. It's a sort of like the darker bit of my. I'm gonna get some of that lead in there. Lead white. I mean, there is a lead yellow. It'd be fun sometime to play with that, but that's boutique. Just kind of going back to it because I need some more here. Or a color very similar to it's subtly different. It's not a ton going on in the sky except for this big weird diagonal cloud. Yeah, so his cloud goes, I don't like it. So I'm going to go. It's not the fixer optional. I don't know what type of volume on this machine. Apologize, it always seems to be fluctuating for some reason. So I'm going to have some lighter colors in here. When I finish up the sky, um, I'll zoom out and you can, you can have a little gander. Another good thing you could do is like 
take a screenshot of, you know, or even, you know, download Jules Dupree, La Revere, as that's with his American accent. And um, then you've got the actual reference at the end if you want to, you know, try to follow along or something. I don't mind. Go for it. Uh, by the way, Ellen, if you do your own study up to Jules and you've been looking at mine or referring to mine, I don't need any credit. I've had people email me say, yeah, I'll give you credit. I was like, no, nah, that's, that's too too far. You know, just do a study after jewels and say, study after jewels. Now, you do a study after one of my paintings that's, you know, 100% uh, M. Francis. You, you, you better give me credit or I'll come knocking on your door. I want that a bit darker. I'm going to add some ivory black into that. I'll show you what I want to do. say not much darker do it it is look Just like if I was working off some photo reference, I could paint this guy, you know, 20 times from the from the same Jules uh, Dupree reference, and you'd have 20 kind of different feeling things. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Okay, we'll pause for a sec. We're gonna come in and sock in the latest bit. Ooh, and we're back. Yeah. So we'll do our little wipe on our brush here. Indian yellow. Nice color. Good. 
can see where all the soft edges add up now. So that, that lead white is making everything I do like way more forgiving. That makes sense. Might not make sense, but hey, we try. We try to make sense here. So, I mean, I haven't sat there and tried to make a study from someone who's doing a study on YouTube. But if you were to say, what's the best way to do that? I would say, um, maybe go through first before you even start painting and make some notes as far as like the steps. And then I would probably just go through and do it. I wouldn't try and match, I would never try and do a stroke for stroke. Because that ain't gonna work. Maybe 
Another good thing to do would be to practice trying to use the sorts of strokes I'm using, get the sorts of effects, you know. I tell you, my, my brushwork is way more sophisticated now than it used to be, but it's actually simpler. I actually um, do a lot of things in a different way than I would have used to. Or I used to be kind of... I don't care about any of that now. I just get it in there. Whoops. See what I was talking about? The volume? So, I'm going to go a little notch lighter on that sky. I'm going to use up all this big lead white mess. I'm going to go with the tiniest, tinsiest touch of CAD. Look, a little more than that. But you definitely want to air on the side, of, but that's pushing things in a whole different, just that little bit. Here, the lightest bits of the cloud. This cloud's pop. And I'm doing the lead white because the lead white holds the strokes a certain way that the titanium doesn't. It's also, it's the king of oil paints. If you have a, you call yourself an oil painter and you haven't worked with lead white, you know what you're missing. That's all I gotta say. little flicky things and they work great they look great but I'm gonna get I'd have to get a tiny brush out to do it I ain't gonna do that Yeah, pretty happy with that. I'm didn't get too tweaky. I like that. Could definitely do more. But uh, I think we're done. Done with this guy for now. Thank you. 
so better off stopping because the nice things you have in the process of trying to perfect them you'll destroy everything good okay said it before I'll say it again Very little paint on the brush. Just giving it a little variance here and there. No, don't come in here. I'll try and sell you a painting. I won't, I never do, but people worry I ain't got no money for no painting, I got kids, I kids need shoes and they need braces and they need gold butter operation. All right, I'll pause, I'll clean up, I'll be back. Yeah, so the intensity effect, I did start to do a little paper towel stuff in the sky, but I like the strokes. Things are not too strokey, so every now and again I might see a little spot or something that I might adjust. Like that's, you can see where I got into some paper towel stuff. and I mean, it was doing some good things, but I'm going to leave it alone because it would be a real easy for me to just over blend the sky. And so I'm trying to help you out too. Don't do it. Don't overblend. Friends don't let friends overblend. Okay. We're gonna. I, I would say we're gonna restate the darks, but I never even got all that dark. So, oh, you want to see where we're at? There you go. Okay. Yeah. Just zoom back in. Alright. Now he's got some real dark darks back there. I ain't interested in that. Sorry. Sorry, Jules. And I think instead of Spinel, I'm going to make a move to Ivory Black. did my thing with the spinel, which is basically drawing. That's our same dark brush from before. This work out of this dark bunch of stuff.
like I said, I don't really want that. I know that's what he did. He went quite dark back there. It's perceptually it's black. I, I don't want it. I'm not doing it. So, it's something a little different there. And I like to have, you want to have your black spread out a little more than it appears. Because you want to put light things on top of it. You don't want to. Back there, gonna be something else. Um, what I think. Be a challenge because I'm deviating from what he has, which you know, and again, so I don't know what he I don't have his actual painting here. scrubbing this in. As you can see it's not as dark as the darker bits. A little scrubby. So you want to cut through this sky stuff with dark, you got to get oil, which I just did, see, it's the only way. And you'll have a limited amount you can do before you've got to go and get some more oil, more paint.
done this truck here like several times now, but I think it's still in the wrong spot. So let's get this one in. Take this off. Let's get some. Um, well, I have second second color mix, which is you know this. And perceptually, that it's still gonna be super dark. I'm going to add some of this. I I'll be honest. I'm not sure what's gonna work here, but I know that I don't want it this dark. So. Start off by re whatever ring or whatever. I thought that way we got a little high, low, something. Super dark, but wall wall. Got these little tweaky sky holes down there. Like I said, this painting could be huge, it could be gigantic. We're working it by 10, so. green dots on there it's all gonna be really nice
I'm pretty happy with that. And so we just moved into this next color all the way now. At least it's it's different than the black. I think it's still very dark. And something that, like a, a modern where we introduce more aerial. Alright. I think I get all this black. Actually, that's all I can. I don't have to get paint on myself. Burn number tone comes into play. Reflection of that tree there. for keeping your brush <clears throat> handy, uh, you know, the other color, so. Swabs. Still going to be a little much, but
Okay. Don't worry, I don't get too tweaky. Oops, I don't get too tweaky there. It's quite a lot of little intricacies. And then, of course, here is um, our missing cow. There it is, there it was. And that would have been lovely. And who knows, if I was, you know, working, if I was doing this, you know, a lot bigger, maybe four times bigger, I'd, uh, I'd paint the cow in. But I ain't gonna do it today, I ain't gonna do it. I wanna try something here. There's like a lot of, like, Ooh. Like a swab wouldn't be right. Not that that's right, but my feeling is like if I do something like that, it's kind of cool. Start with a there and then follow up. Ooh, that didn't work.
No, it's... So, that's it for the darks, I would say. Getting some sienna tones in here. I want to work that in. I'm wondering, though, about this four at this juncture. I think I'm going to make a move over to a two. these really intense reds that I see over here. I didn't really admix the sienna tone I'm seeing there which is like bring in some of that. More red. I think this might be the answer. They give me like an opaque sienna. some new subscribers all the time so I'm mean, gonna assume you're new um, the key to getting really good greens in your trees is to have a lot of reds so this reds are going in underneath uh, you could paint a tree almost completely red and then a couple dots of green on top it'll be perceptually green another good technique is to um, paint the tree all green Sorry about that. I have way too much power in the engine. Um, yeah, so now you try to paint the tree, you know, with a lot of greens. And just a dot or two of red. green in the reference but I got I got plants touch my red. I got this, probably time to get into this, this real cherry-ish kind of red. Time to get into some of that. I don't want to lose a lot of nice stuff I've got either. Sorry if you can't see what I'm doing there. Yeah. this off and then pop in a few of those real ready reds. <clears throat>
So we've been doing this a little while. You remember this when we mix this? Two. I gotta lighten out a touch. Orange, cat orange. This one past these, so it should should pop, it should jump. Oh, that's my friend Jenny. people than me. I'll have to say this red feels so nice to put in. going to be another frame rabbit, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. I think I'm going to go just a little more orange in here before I kick in with the greens.
Yeah, rocking it Barbizon style, yo. Uh, in my spare time here, which I don't have tons of, I've been uh, starting to read the uh, American uh, the History of Tonalism, History of American Tonalism, one of those. Great. David A. Cleveland, I, and I just saw in his bio that he was a novelist as well, which one of the most readable art books you're ever going to read. He writes a, a dream. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. We're getting close to done too. You'll be glad to hear because you're getting worn out, eh? You're not even doing this. You're getting worn out. Probably mix a lot more green than I need here. Let's just work some more of these. It's nice. Good touch of cat yellow in there. And I hit a little of this blue because it'll cool it off a little. Taylor Rowney makes a pro level grade of paint. These were great. I mean, I don't know if I see a problem. Yes, yeah, so I wanted to darken this, but not with the coolness that I could have brought in. trees this is like the, the green that I mixed You must stick.
Grabbing a little bit of Mike's gray. sure what to do but I'm gonna go for a little of this yellow ochre And then down here, oh, what happens if I have it with Indian yellow? Gets me a little orange direction, yeah? I'll grab a touch of oil too. Yeah, close to done. Gonna mix some of this uh, red with some of this green. Make red green. <laughs>
my spot. So this is definitely when I probably will come back to this. Or maybe not. I don't know what's on the studies. Orange. Frankly, this spot of the painting gets real complex. But the last thing we're going to be doing coming in here with a little bit more black in a few spots. Just to kind of re get some of the things back. Here we want some proper green. Probably don't need that much. So it's getting late here, so you know, we're gonna probably call it a day. Could keep tweaking. Guess it's looking like it's in what I call fairly saleable condition right now. It's a lot bigger. <clears throat> and that's really just compensating for the um, the smaller size. I was just looking so skinny and kind of wrong. So it's a very odd color. He has this over here. I'm just going to go green. All right, let's get our Dark brush out, do a few things. Brush. 
bit of oil. Well, I feel like I learned something today. Hopefully, you got some room for this as well. bunch of like in his painting a bunch of like light bits there but I think it's all glare from the photography so I ain't doing it unless I don't like it so this is one of these areas of the painting here where things kind of
thought about leaving that just board color, but it'll just won't look right. See what I mean? He's got more sky holes. I don't care. I don't care. Huh? <clears throat> Oh, 
It might be nice to do a second pass. We'll see. We'll see. I gotta go. This is a good place to leave it at. Thanks for joining me today. Let's see if I can get the whole. This will be for the. Oh, those leaning backs never seem to fly. Thank you for joining me today. Study of Dupree. Oh. Please. Take good care. Of yourself. Your family. All your loved ones and try and love your enemies and while you're doing all that please stay out of trouble